This week on Make Better Wealth Decisions, we're going to be talking about flow through shares. We're going to be speaking with an expert who can help us walk through all of the permutations of what to do with flow through shares, your tax situation, how they work, whether or not you should buy them based on your risk profile, what you need to know about liquidity, how you can use them for charitable gifting. There's a whole lot of, of information that's available with regard to flow through shares and we're going to be looking at all of it make better wealth decisions a podcast that explores how financial advisors blind spots can harm your investments i'm your host john degui a portfolio manager with design securities in toronto in this podcast we'll provide advice on how you can achieve better outcomes by maximizing investments and minimizing taxes let's put our thinking caps on as we consciously decide to get smarter about our money. Hey, my guest this week is Ken Stern. Ken specializes in helping Canadian accredited investors reduce their taxes and enhance their philanthropy through the unique tax benefits of flow through shares. That's something that we haven't talked about before. Ken, welcome. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about flow through shares from the point of 101. A lot of people listening to Make Better Wealth Decisions have probably never heard of flow through shares, what they are, why they work. So maybe we could begin with a high level of exactly what they are and, and why people should consider using them. Perfect. Perfect. So flow through shares are offered by mining exploration companies. They used to also be offered by oil and gas exploration, but the government ended that regime in 2022. So exploration for critical minerals and other minerals in Canada is a very important part of the economy. It also provides economic development and jobs in often remote areas of the country. So it, it's a win-win uh, for the industry, uh, for local populations, et cetera. And companies that are doing this exploration don't necessarily have revenue, but they have expenses. And so the government, in their infinite wisdom, said, we're going to allow you to renounce those expenses to purchasers of flow-through shares. And I'll explain the word flow-through means that they're going to flow those expenses to the buyers of the shares. And the buyer of the shares gets to deduct them 100% off of their income tax return. So the benefit is you're buying shares they can be volatile, but you're getting a significant tax break. In addition to being able to write them off, the government provides an additional investment tax credit, which is a direct reduction of the tax payable in the year in which you're finding. Right. So go ahead. I, I, w I wonder if we could point out that in order to buy a flow through share, you have to be a so-called accredited investor, which is something I referenced off the top. And for the people who aren't familiar with what that means, the government in its wisdom and regulators in their wisdom have said that we want to make certain products like this available only to people that we think are sophisticated enough to buy them. But they use income and assets as a proxy for sophistication. So they'll say, you have to be making $200,000 a year, or you and your spouse are combined making $300,000 a year, or you have a million dollars of net liquid assets. And if you meet these tests, then you can buy flow through shares. Otherwise, you might be precluded from buying them at all. John, sorry, just a, a small correction. Flow through shares can be purchased by anyone through a limited partnership. So limited partnerships offer the opportunity for any investor to purchase the shares and get the tax write-off. There are significant limitations when you buy through a limited partnership that we don't have in the way we structure a deal. Okay. Uh, so I, what, what you're saying is if you buy them your way, which is through a, a private placement, and then have them basically pre-sold at a, at a pre-agreed price, you, you just in and out, then in those instances, you have to be accredited. But if you're just buying them as a, a general investor, you don't have to be accredited. You can be an ordinary person like anyone else. That's correct. And so just maybe a little background on myself. I was an investment advisor for 30 years and I only bought a flow through a limited partnership once and the risks turned out to be way significant. A $50,000 investment 
turned into $5,000 by the time we were able to cash it in. Yes, the tax benefits were there, but the end result was not very pretty. And so uh, I stayed away from the limited partnerships and have found this method using a structured transaction on a bought deal basis, which means that the buyer of our flow through shares sell them immediately the same day they buy them to someone who wants to own the shares and they buy them at a predetermined price. So price risk is eliminated. And uh, in addition, uh, you're supposed to hold these shares for 120 days at least, but there's a way to get around that, which we do through a uh, national instrument uh, that allows us to do a private off-market sale to another accredited investor. I, I should also say that for a lot of people, if they want to buy a flow through uh, offering, either through a private place such as yours or through a limited partnership, it makes sense. It makes the most sense if you're in a high bracket and in, in Ontario, at least, and in Canada, in Ontario, the top bracket is 53.53%. And by the time you're in the top bracket, that means you're probably making a little over $240,000 a year. So it works, it, the deductions work at all levels of income. But if you want to get the biggest deduction, you have to have the highest amount of income. And that's the threshold uh, net of all other expenses that you should be looking at so that you can deduct the benefits of the flow through purchase at the highest possible marginal rate. Yeah, that's correct. So what we try to do is make sure that after all deductions, whether it's an RSP or a charitable donation or a flow through purchase, that the income that's being taxed is still at the top marginal rate. Right. Okay. So. Maybe you could explain a little more detail. I think you touched on this a little bit about why governments are offering such generous tax rates. Why would you think when governments are so strapped for money, governments would be so willing to offer tax breaks for doing exploratory and developmental mining? Basically, it's good for the national economy. Uh, Canada is one of the biggest producers of metals and minerals in the world. We are definitely a world-class entity when it comes to that. And the economic activity that it brings, especially, as I mentioned, the remote areas, is very important to the country. So it's something that's been in the tax code since, I believe, the 1970s. It's been affirmed many times. In fact, in the 2022 federal budget, when they eliminated the ability to use flow through for oil and gas, they added an additional investing tax credit if the mining company is exploring for critical minerals, which are very important to the green energy uh, initiatives uh, put forth by the government. It's funny because as one door closes, another one opens, right? So even as the government is trying to get people off their addiction to carbon and oil, we need other critical minerals and rare earths for the production of green energy through lithium batteries and these sorts of things that are uh, they're available and you want to have that. And so Follow the money. People offer the incentives for those things that will hopefully where the government says we, we need to get more exposure and more of a made in Canada solution for these sorts of things. It's, it's critical to our national security. So let's get people doing this. It's interesting how that works. Could you offer some thoughts on the differences? And we've already touched on this, but maybe a little more detail with regard to buying flow throughs, either through a limited partnership, the way people did it traditionally, the way I've done it in the past and through a bot deal, which is the way it works when you do it. One of the primary differences is in a limited partnership, there are many different issues. So you might have a dozen or more companies' shares that have been issued, they're in the limited partnership, and some may do well and some may not do well at all. Some might flame out completely. And you're banking on average return, I guess. Uh, but another key difference is the liquidity. So with our deal, you get the net proceeds right away within a few days of the deal closing. And Whereas with the limited partnership, you have to wait at least a year. The companies that offer these limited partnerships, they call them short duration, but they're usually 12 to 14 months that you have to wait for your capital. So even though you don't get back all of your capital because of the way the deal is structured, you're not without the bulk of your capital for more than a few days. That's a big difference. And, and, and of course, you get a tax deduction so that when you do your taxes in April, you're getting a massive write-off that you wouldn't get 
if you didn't buy the flow through other than perhaps through allowable deductions like RRSP contributions and that sort of thing. That's correct. But one thing that's very important to note is that depending on the time of the year that one got, uh, buys one of these uh, flow through deals, uh, you can recoup the tax earlier than waiting for your tax return in the following year. If someone is making installments uh, and let's say their income was $500,000 last year, installers are based on 500K. They do 100,000 of flow through shares and it should have been based on 400. They can modify their installments so that they still give our uh, CRA enough money, but they don't have to remit everything that was expected and therefore get that tax release immediately. That's great. That's a great way of thinking about how the tax benefits work. And a lot of people don't necessarily think about that because most people don't pay in installments. And I think the other thing that is probably worth noting is that, as you say, the limited partnership format uh, has concerns with regard to liquidity. And in the old, uh, under, under the partnership format, if you have to wait 12 or 14 months before you can sell, not only are you not able to sell under any circumstances, but you're left the vagaries of the market and the stocks that are in the partnership or the underlying commodity price could go up or down, like whether you're buying gold or minerals or oil or what have you. But if the price goes down, if it was a normal investment, you could sell before it dropped any further. But in a limited partnership structure, you're stuck. You have to wait until the partnership rolls over. And, and in the meantime, you just have to sit and watch and take your lumps. It's a very frustrating situation. And I've been on both sides. I've recommended to flow through LPs in the past. And I've seen people do very well in some instances. And I've, had, I've seen people get caught. Because when oil gets caught in a drawdown, and for that matter, it could be any, it could be uh, mining as well. If, if the underlying uh, commodity gets hurt, then the person investing in that commodity is likely to get hurt as well. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about how individuals might want to buy flow through shares, but also how corporations might wish to buy them, because you can do that as well. Corporations are tax paying entities. How does that work? Tell us maybe a little bit about each way. So corporately, yes, you, you can buy so through shares. There are some limitations though. In a, in a, a regular uh, CCPC, the tax rate on income is pretty low. And going back to something we talked about earlier, the higher the tax rate, the more effective the strategy is. If someone has a holding company and they're being taxed at the highest possible rate, or they have income in their opco, that is mm -hmm. beyond the threshold where they start to charge higher tax rates, they can be effective. And one of the things that a transaction does corporately is create a capital gain. And, and the reason there's a capital gain is you, you bought an asset and you've written it off completely. So you essentially own it for zero. And then when you go to sell it, it's considered a capital gain. And of course, in a corporate scenario, the capital dividend account is credited with half of that capital gain, allowing the company owner to take funds out of the company tax-free. And we will often compare that to withdrawing money uh, on an eligible dividend basis or a non-eligible dividend basis, and flow-through uh, always is superior. So it can work in corporate scenarios. The new tax rules that were put in place and not yet law uh, had an impact on that, they were going to have an effect on what's called AMT or alternative minimum tax. And so that's something one has to watch out for when contemplating a flow through deal corporately. Alternative minimum tax is the sort of thing that, again, most people never think of, but it's really just a limitation on how much of a deduction you can claim in any given year. So it's great that you have these allowable deductions. But governments will say, you, you can't, we're not going to let you deduct half a million dollars this year. We're just going to have you say, pay some tax. Now you can get it back in the, in future years, but you're going to have to pay a little bit of tax now and then get it down the road. That's correct. And just one, one note in that the government initially said that the alternative minimum tax would not consider the flow through deduction. And with a lot of lobbying between the flow through industry and mining Canada and finance, they have actually reversed that. So it's just another vote of confidence that the flow through regime is part and parcel of government policy and remains that way. 
I, I might also add that this being 2024, there's an additional wrinkle this year that perhaps didn't really exist in other years, and that is that the inclusion rate changed in the most recent federal budget. And as a result, people who are selling a, a property that's not a principal residence are likely to, to incur a capital gain of more than a quarter of a million dollars. But even some people who are selling individual securities, including those people who didn't want to have to sell securities after the, the inclusion rate being bumped up from 50% to two thirds, a lot of people sold securities in the spring in order to avoid that. And as a result, they've got a tax problem that is going to have to be figured out between now and the end of April. So flow through shares are a solution that are, that's really useful for a lot of people, but we only have about a month and a half left before you can buy these things. Otherwise the opportunity will be lost. And the thing that I should also mention that we haven't mentioned yet is that flow through shares have to be purchased in the calendar year that they're deducted. It's not like an RRSP where you have 60 days into the new year where you can buy them and, and then carry them back to the previous year. If you want the deduction in 2024, you have to buy the flow through in 2024. And uh, just uh, an important thing to note is that this is not a continuous offering, right. like a mutual fund or an ETF or a stock for that matter. These are private placements and they happen from time to time. And so we had a flurry of activity leading up to the June 15th change over in the inclusion rate. And then we spent all of July, August, and most of September without any deals happening. So we've had a few recently. I'm hoping that there'll be a few more before the end of the year. But again, one needs to register intent and get in the queue. And then once a deal is announced, then we can talk about participation. Right. Let's talk about charitable giving. We haven't talked about that yet. And I know that one of the great ways that a lot of people use flow through shares is in conjunction with their charitable pursuits. Maybe you could take a moment to walk us through what that might look like. Absolutely. The charitable regime is a very big part of the flow through world. When you donate securities, appreciated securities, and most people believe that is the most efficient way to donate you get to avoid paying the capital gains tax. So let's say you bought BCE stock and you've got a 75% gain, thankfully it'd be great. You can donate those securities. You get a donation receipt for the full value, market value, and you avoid paying the tax. When it comes to donating flow through shares, the government actually changed the rule in 2012 and said that even if you're donating flow through shares, you will still have to pay the tax on the, uh, on the gain. Even with that in mind, fl donating sh uh, flow through shares remains a superior way, the lowest cost possible way of donating. So the worst case scenario with flow through shares is about 25 cents on the dollar. Whereas normally a 50% tax rate would cost you 50 cents on every dollar donated. So 25 cents per dollar donated at the worst, and we can drive that price down as low as one penny per dollar with enough initial capital. It gets a little complicated, but the bottom line is that donating uh, flow through shares to charity is a very big part of the business, and anybody contemplating that ought to look into it. That's, it's a nice thing to, it's a feel good story. It's a nice way of thinking about doing your financial planning is a lot of people are doing quite well. Thank you very much. And they want to give back and they don't really know how to do it. And one of those, one of the great ways of doing it is if you have some cash, especially if you've got marketable securities that you're trying to offload, you can give the securities and avoid the capital gains tax. But if you've also got enough of a tax from other things that you've sold, you can offset those taxes by buying flow through. So it's a really nice way of complementing the whole puzzle of what you're going to give and how and, and maintaining liquidity along the way. All right, let's see if we can wrap this up here, Ken. One of the questions I always like to ask people at the end is, this is called make better wealth decisions. What advice would you give to the people listening today to help them make better wealth decisions as they go about their financial planning? Boy, that's a good question. There's so many, there's so many topics I could get into. As an advisor, uh, I used to call myself a behavior modification specialist. And so having an advisor who will hold your hand and steal your nerves through difficult times 
is probably the most valuable thing that you can do. Secondly, uh, putting money away. So you have to put money away. Don't rely on returns to accumulate wealth. You need to start putting money away early in your life and it will serve you in good stead. There's a story that you know, goes, if somebody starts putting $100 a month away every month from age 19 to age 29, and then somebody starts the same regime at age 30, $100 a month all the way to age 65, given the same rate of return, the person who only contributed for 10 years but early on has more money. Right. People just don't get that. But time, compounding, and putting money away, are, to me, are the secrets to wealth. And then making sure that you have a cell discipline when it's appropriate and listen to your advisor. Ken, thank you. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you today. I want to wish you all the best down the road. Thanks very much, John. Appreciate the opportunity. John Degui is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. The views expressed in this program are not to be construed as specific advice. It is recommended that you consult a qualified advisor before taking action. His books, The Professional Financial Advisor 4, Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry and Bullshift are available through Amazon and in bookstores throughout Canada. You can reach John at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647-782-6387 or at jdegui at designedsecurities.ca.